Pikes Peak Library District, and I work at the High Prairie Branch. We've been talking lately about what we're thankful for. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for this beautiful city that I get to live in. I mean, the weather's perfect today, breezy, sunny, not too hot. But look at the environment we live in. You can see here, I'm at the UC campus. off there. And then in the other direction, you can see pulpit rock behind me too. Open space, perfect for hiking. You can probably see Pikes Peak in the mountain range. It is covered by clouds right now. But Pikes Peak is the highest mountain that we can see in the Front Range from Colorado Springs. How did Pikes Peak get its name? Well, a guy named Zebulon Pike came here and hiked up that mountain, and it later became Pikes Peak named after him. But actually, that mountain was known by the Ute people for a long time before Zebulon Pike came around, and they had a different name for it. They called it Tava, or Mountain of the Sun. Hi, so here we are at Garden of the Gods, a beautiful, magical location in Colorado Springs that you've probably visited yourself. Garden of the Gods, before it even got that name, was considered a sacred place. So it was a neutral meeting grounds, a resting place for many different tribes. Um, not just the Ute that were native to the area, but also the Cheyenne, the Comanche, and others. Hi, I'm Tina with the Pikes Peak Library District. Today I'm sharing a gratitude journal with you from Homeschool Take and Make. Why a gratitude journal? Well, studies show that practicing gratitude makes us happier. Focusing on people and things that you are thankful for can help you feel joyful. When we express appreciation, it's also good for friendships. When you tell someone thank you or tell them about what, why you appreciate them, it helps us to focus on the positive things of that person. And then we feel better about the friendship. Telling someone what you like about them or acknowledging a person's kindness helps them to feel good too. Gratitude, happiness, thankfulness, appreciation, friendship, joy. That's what it's about today. There are many ways that you can journal. Of course you can write, but you can also draw. You can even use your photographs to create collages or magazines that are no longer in use. You can cut apart images that you enjoy. You can even create poems or simply Find a nice cozy place, write down your feelings and experiences that you are grateful for. Inside your Take and Make, you'll find your gratitude journal to personalize. Starting with the front cover is a place to put your name, and then you can decorate any way you like with stickers or drawings. On the back cover, 
we have some inspirational quotes that'll get you started thinking about gratitude and thankfulness as you explore journaling. The first page talks about why a gratitude journal, and you can review that if you like. We've already talked about that. And then we'll have places like this page where you can fill in the blanks. I am thankful for my favorite people, my favorite books. <laughs> and then here is a fun acrostic poem. And this acrostic poem is the word joy. So the first letter J, you would put a phrase or a word that starts with the letter J, O, and then Y to create your very own poem. We also have some blank pages that you can fill in if you find a nice cozy spot, maybe outside on a nice sunny day or in your favorite chair where you can write, just free write about your gratitude for the day, your thankfulness. And is it a person? Is it an experience? Is it something that you enjoy doing with your friends? And then here is another place where you can fill in things about, I appreciate when my family shares with me and write that favorite meal, favorite game to play. In the middle, we have this full page spread. So you'll want to keep this one, right, this page right in the middle, where you can try journaling for a whole week, seven days. So each rainbow arc, you can write what you're grateful for that day and then you can color it in and design it any way that you like, that you find creative and fun for you to do. Once you have your gratitude journal pages put together with your cover on the outside, all of your pages put in order with the rainbow full spread page in the middle, then we're ready to secure these so they stay in place, okay? The first part that you'll do is make sure you have all of these in order, even, and we'll fold the gratitude journal in half, and we'll use our thumb to make a nice sharp crease. It's already looking more like a book. The next step we need to do is make sure these pages are secured inside our journal so they don't fall out. Again, we'll be sure to have them all even and ready to go. We'll have the cover showing on top. The, one of the easiest methods is to use a stapler, or later I'll demonstrate how to use a hole punch. So here we're gonna place the stapler. It really can't fit parallel to the crease, but the stapler can fit as close as it can to that middle crease. And we're going to staple on the top and now staple on the bottom. Don't staple this way because then when you try to fold it and read it, that staple will be getting in the way and it won't fold evenly. So the easiest way is to get that stapler right there next to the crease as close as it can go without going over the crease. Give it a staple so it looks kind of like this. So it's not quite straight, little diagonal, but it'll still work, we'll fold it in half. And then if you take a look when you open the journal, I think it opens pretty good and it's starting to look like a book. You can also get a bit more creative by using a hole punch. I'm demonstrating with one I have at home. You may have one at home too, or you can stop by any of our Pikes Peak Library District maker spaces, and you can ask to borrow the hole punch there. So the way that you'll start this out is just place it as close as you can to the center part where you folded your journal. Place your hole punch in and make sure all your pages are even, evenly spaced together and then give it a punch. And we'll do that at, on the bottom as well too. And once you have the holes, you can get 
creative using yarn or ribbon, what came in with your package, or anything that you have at home that you'd like to use too that maybe suits your personality better. So if you just squeeze the end, sometimes if you're using yarn, you can put a little tape at the end so it makes it easier to thread. And once you thread through that hole, you're going to wanna to keep the single ribbon through the middle. And then on the outside, you can tie this together and you can create a bow. You can do just a simple tie, whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever suits your personality and your mood that day. There's a fun way to make your fancy ends on your ribbon. You can just cut straight across in a diagonal if you like. And that finishes off the end. Or what I like to do is, let's see, I think I want about that length. So I'm gonna cut off the length. And then I fold it in half. And it looks like I'm gonna cut out a triangle and go to the very corner. And that creates that fancy kind of award-winning looking ribbon edge, if you like that as well too. So that's the first start to your journal. Now that you've completed assembling your gratitude journal, the fun begins. It's totally up to you, it's your journal. And as you can see, going through the journal I created, I put some, filled in some of those fill in the blanks and through different artistic forms, I put together the poem using the acrostic method of joy. So J, jo jovial family game nights, O, overjoyed to come home to my tail wagging welcoming pup and Y, yellow sunrises on warm summer mornings and sunsets on perfect fall evenings. Those are the things that bring me joy. And as you can see, I skip some pages here. So skip around, fill in those pages that speak to you. I also talked about some things that I am having challenges with. So I'm having a little bit of a difficult time for me to relax, especially before bed. So this is how I am working on it with deep breathing exercises. I'm counting in for five, taking that deep breath in, and then I'm going to hold it for five, and then I'm gonna breathe out for five, Wow, I already feel better. I'm going to try to do that three to five times and then I'll journal about what I learned from this experience. And we talked about using magazines. Magazines are a fun way that we can add photograph, thick images to our journal without cutting up our photos. Or if you have some photos that your parents don't mind you cutting up, you can use those in your journal as well too. So I'm thankful for, I have a garden in my backyard and we had so many raspberries. It was so fun picking raspberries with my grandson. Again, love that dog, love coming home and seeing him every day. He, I'm so thankful he is in my life and I do enjoy my exercise classes. I'm so thankful my, for my instructors and having that time where I just take care of myself. Cut out some more magazines that showed an image of joy. And here I had another um, volunteer, a teen volunteer at the library, fill in what she thought about with for free journaling on thankfulness and gratitude. And here she also filled out our rainbow 
And if you remember, this is gratitude for one week. So each day writing about what you're grateful for and coloring it in or adding any designs that you like to it to make it your own. I like this. This for me is really helpful. It's sweet dreams. Write or draw before you go to sleep what you are grateful for that day. We've got three clouds that you can fill in before you go to sleep and one for each night. You can add more clouds if you like. Reflect on how you feel after doing this exercise for a few days. And then here is appreciation. And as you can see, you can add your own drawings too if you like. The rest of the book is yours to make your own. Take your time, enjoy your gratitude journal. And remember, most importantly, have fun. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Athena, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about how people around the world give thanks. While Thanksgiving is a largely American holiday, countries from around the world celebrate and express gratitude with their own special traditions. Let's learn a bit more about that, shall we? This first holiday may sound familiar. In Liberia, a country in West Africa, they celebrate a holiday called Thanksgiving. That's right, this one is directly inspired by the American holiday. Liberia was founded in the 19th century by formerly enslaved Americans, and they took some of their traditions with them. In Liberia, Thanksgiving is celebrated on the first Thursday in November by visiting places of worship, gathering with friends and family, and enjoying a Thanksgiving feast. Popular dishes include roast chicken, green bean casserole, and mashed cassavas. Do these sound like dishes that you eat at Thanksgiving? Spices like cayenne pepper are also popular additions to these dishes in Liberia. For this next holiday, we're going to take a short trip to a southern state in India where they celebrate a four-day harvest festival called Pongal. This festival is celebrated in mid-January when rice, sugarcane, and turmeric are being harvested. The name of the festival comes from a word meaning to boil, and each day rice is cooked as part of the celebrations. of the four days of the festival looks slightly different. But on the third day, when farmers honor and give thanks for their cattle, you might see freshly scrubbed cows with brightly painted horns, flower garlands, and other colorful accessories. The Central European country of Germany also sees its share of harvest festivals, which are usually held on the first Sunday in October. Church services are a central part of the festivities, which are often sponsored by local Catholic and Protestant churches. These festivals can include parades, music, food, and even fireworks. But one part of Germany has another way of giving back while they're giving thanks. In early October, thousands of rubber ducks are sent racing down a river in southwest Germany. While the winners of this race do collect prizes, the proceeds of the rubber duck race go to charity. At three euros per rubber duck entered, that can really add up. Do your Thanksgiving traditions include any sort of charitable work? Did any of these traditions sound like yours? How were they the same and how were they different?